welcome back to the part two adventure of VGA support on the PlayStation 2. I left you on a bit of a cliffhanger, so let's get into it. In the last episode, we had a few issues with the Xorg server setup, so let's go through that first to catch up on the process required to get this thing running. And after spending hours and hours on trying to get this thing working with all kinds of settings, it turns out that the Xorg file that comes with DB and Squeeze was just not happy to work with this at all. So I went back to the Kloader SourceForge page, and I remember seeing this in a post from another person somewhere that they had Openbox, Fluxbox, and even XFCE for working. So I knew there had to be something I was missing. Let's have a look at this Xorg uh, file here. And it, it looks very basic, to be fair. It does have the uh, keyboard layout for German, so we'll have to change that. Um, going through here, so it uses the frame buffer device, FB dev, default depth 24, nothing special there. I think I just had too many settings in the previous one, so let's just try this out and uh, see what we get. Now that is a much better sign there, and the fact that it actually tries to change resolutions here. It took a little while for this to come up, and this is actually the second time I ran it. I forgot to record the first time fully. I was so excited. Um, but it takes a little while to get into the desktop itself, so this is open box running. Uh, it's a little bit slow. I'm actually trying to move the mouse here, and it's just doing nothing. Now, it's taken a while to get to the desktop here after all the XOR configuration settings. It's a bit sluggish, but bear in mind, we are still running Apache server, Webman, SQL, and the desktop. So let's have a little bit of a look at the performance and see what we can do with this machine now that we have a graphical environment. And uh, I've installed a few programs and games for today's video. Wow, look at that. The CPU isn't actually doing too bad at this point, and the memory use, considering, isn't all that bad. It's actually a lot better than I thought it would be with a graphical user interface running, but still, can we run any useful programs? And I mean, look at that. That actually draws pretty well on Openbox here, and it's not too sluggish or anything. One thing I had noticed is, is I had not changed the XORG comp file to uh, use an English keyboard layout. So we'll change this. And we should be able to download some programs. Alright, cool. We've downloaded a basic set of uh, GTK programs for Openbox, so let's have a look at them here. And our first one here, you can see down the bottom, we've got a nice menu bar. Tint 2. Uh, we've also downloaded some uh, text editors, file browsers, web browsers, uh, and a bunch of other tools. So you can see in here, Debian's got all its tools. Pretty much the basic set. Um, for open box. I did download these two file managers but had a little bit of trouble getting them going but we'll have a look at those later. The basic sort of telnet, we've got uh, Lynx browser. Uh, I did download Midori as well but I was unable to get that to uh, load and I'll get into that sort of at the end of this video. 
is we had some um, locale issues and I keep reverting to the wrong library for C. So we've got links open here, nothing special of a browser, but it does work, which I was pretty happy with. And I tried to go to trusty old frogfind.com. Now I racked my brain on this for like 10 minutes because it had worked previously and it wouldn't load. So I was like, what's going on here? And I figured out that my uh, N key had stopped working, so I couldn't fro find frogfid.com. So we'll go to Google, just so you can see it load up. Just a quick side note here too, um, one of the YouTube subscribers had mentioned when they tried this as a web server years ago, that uh, they were unable to run it for more than a day or two, but I have managed to get this run running for about two weeks, and uh, it performs pretty well. So it is available still on uh, ps2.privatedns.org, semicolon 8080 is the port, and you can actually log in and sign in, and there's a whole useful page there now which you can actually download uh, kernels and just bits and pieces, and I'll throw up a bunch of stuff about this project on there as the uh, project goes on um, just as a bit of a reference guide and I'll keep that running so I ended up making a script that automatically runs at uh, boot time that actively pings and updates the IP address for everything to keep it going so uh, here you can see Google runs fine uh, this is the point where I still hadn't really cotton on that uh, my N key wasn't working and then I went, ah, there it is, that's the problem. Initially I thought it might have been a problem with um, links, but uh, in the terminal it was still frogfid. So I uh, went and got another keyboard after that. Now back to the menu, playing games has always been an ambition of mine on this project. So I've got Boz Wars, Warzone 2100, Lynn City, and uh, a couple of X-based or you know Xorg apps as well like the clock and the eyes and the logo so we'll have a look at the eyes that's always a fun one isn't it top was up next uh, it works but there's a few issues there see with the uh, LC type LC all the locale wasn't working properly so this is one of the issues I ran into when trying to run uh, rocks for example the um, file explorer sort of program and um, we're going to have to fix that issue to get anything else to run, really. Right, so let's try out Lynn City. Now, I had to speed this up because it does load quite slowly, and you'll see it here. This is about twice the speed of its natural uh, rendering. But it does load, and it's actually quite playable. Not that it's a, an amazing game. No discredit to the uh, community and the creators of it. Um, but it does work, and I was quite surprised at how playable it is. And being a big fan of uh, SimCity 2000, and even the original SimCity, I had no idea how to play this game whatsoever. But it does look pretty cool. Um, all the animation works. It's actually a pretty, pretty good game for this. And I know what you're thinking, it's a PlayStation 2, it came with its own games with far better superior graphics, but that's not really the point. Okay, that's probably enough of Lynn City for now, we'll look at some more games later, but touching back to the locale settings, uh, these are the files that we need to edit to make sure we don't get these errors anymore, and they're actually in the locale.gen file, uh, but they're hashed, so they're uh, commented out, so you just got to uncomment them. Uh, moving over to the PS2 Life page, so this is the uh, new website I've got hosted if you haven't seen it already. Just register and then you can log in and you'll see a nice little welcome page like this with a few resources. It's kind of like a social media type thing so you can post images and comments and all that sort of stuff on things you see and I'll add things on there as the uh, project progresses. Um, there is also a downloads page here, so there's the 3.8 kernel, you can give that a swirl. Um, there's the 2635.14 kernel. Now this is an updated version of what is running on this version of Debian that we're using at the moment. 
and we'll get into different kernels and stuff like that a little bit later. Um, you will be able to stream videos from there. Now it actually does work, but it won't work on modern day browsers as this is a 3GP file. Uh, but it does work. Well, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at Fluxbox, which came out green for some reason. So we'll have a bit of a play around with those settings and uh, see if we can't fix that up. But thank you for watching today, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.